Hey guys, back again. Um, I hope you are having a wonderful week. Um, it is March 18th. I am having a crazy week, but I'm very excited. I am recording this a little bit early. You'll see I'm, I'm recording this Monday night because I'm leaving very early to Wednesday morning to speak at a call a show called Global Pet Expo. Um, lots of pet retailers and pet brands that are going to be there. Um, I do this for the fun of it. Um, I'm teaching two courses or I'm teaching two classes there. I'm doing a keynote as well, so I'm kind of excited. Um, and then I'm going to do some golfing while I'm there. So um, important to work hard and play hard. Um, so I am very excited. Anyway. I'm going to talk through click and collect today. Um, this is a topic that um, you're, you're kind of lucky because you're going to get two light weeks. Uh, la last week was a, a tiny bit on the light side and, and this week is too only because we have talked about click and collect um, pretty much all the way through this, um, you know, all the way through through omnichannel and, and pretty much through most of our digital stuff. And, Click and collect is, the, you know, the reason it's so popular is because consumers really want it, um, retailers really love it, uh, and why we talk about it with you guys is you're going to have to sort out all of the crap in between. Um, so this is, you know, last week we talked about real estate and how you rebalance out stores and profit per square foot. Um, as you get into click and collect, you will see, you know, this is why... Um, this is why you guys are going to have drops because everybody wants this. Nobody really understands it. You understand the infrastructure pieces behind it that make people crazy. Um, here are some of the consumer reasons that um, you know people love this and they want it. Um, you look at these charts that I have here. Um, you know um, the things that make the most sense that you know kind of intersect with what a consumer wants versus what a retailer wants um, you look at this this line here where both of these things are orange um, you know click and collect orders are easy to track um, and they're uh, for the retailer as well as for the consumer tracking makes it uh, super simple and, and something that they can do um, and both parties love that a lot um, visibility of expected delivery date. Um, this one is amazing for consumers. Uh, for retailers, not so much because they got to be held to delivery dates and service levels and things like that. Um, if you're getting into operations with retailers, um, service levels uh, is going to be a thing. If you guys have any experience with this already, you know what I'm talking about service levels and then um, how you agree to service terms are going to be a big deal especially if you're a brand that's helping a retailer um, you know get this done um, this is going to be a pain point um, visibility to delivery date for the consumer this makes them very happy uh, in my own life um, we do a lot of you know the three kids seem to be trying to eat, literally eat us out of house and home and so um, you know, I, I go downtown by Go Train. Uh, I park my car at the Go Train. There's a Walmart literally beside the Go Train station. And what we do basically is I will um, I will schedule a pickup for after I arrive. So if I'm coming home on the 5:30 train, I'm there by six. I schedule my um, order for six to seven. I drive over and pick it up. Uh, love it. Love that I can do that. Um, also love. What I love as a consumer, I reflect this chart a lot, is I love this because Walmart will say to me, I'm out of stock um, on certain items, um, and I get that by email. Um, and so I'll know ahead of time you know, what they've substituted, what they haven't, um, and then I'll know what to decline and what not to, and that also allows me to get to another grocery store to get the item that I want um, if they have shorted me the item. So again, love that. Um, again, if you're on the on the operation side of this, whether you're the brand or the retailer, you know that there's an entire infrastructure behind this around um, do we really have it in stock? Is it really there? Um, yeah, <laughs> can we get it to them in time? Uh, you know, all of those things that, that go on behind the scenes, um, you know, that allow for this email to get to me, the consumer. Um, so retailers don't love that very much but um, but they do it anyway 
um, because they need it. And so, you know, same applies here um, with, with text and communication. Um, this one I don't care as much because as long as I'm getting an email, I'm good. Uh, I don't necessarily need this one because uh, now it's overkill. Now, now you're just, you know, kind of spamming me, even though I want to know. Um, deliveries tracking, uh, fascinating watch, Uber Eats, um, Instacart, all of these guys, you know, deliver product. Um, and so this is really cool. Again, lots and lots of work for a brand or a retailer that is doing this. Um, you know, so they don't really love it as much and they try, they try not to offer that unless they really have to. Um, and then this one, um, I think that consumers don't like this as much because they appreciate the, the complexity of it, um, being able to change an order halfway through. Plus you can decline things as they come in anyway, but, um, you know, for retailers, they really hate this, right? Like, because, uh, it really jams them up. It jams them with a transport cost. Um, so click and collect has some really obvious benefits. You can see the consumer really wants it for all of these reasons. Um, just, just kind of a really key, you know, sort of, um, thing happening here. Um, some stats around, around, uh, Walmart and its customers and, and, uh, you know, so, um, before I get to this, so BOPIS, if you read uh, the documents, um, that I put in there, um, you know, so, um, I just flipped to the document for a second, but here, um, you know, buy online, pick up in store. Um, so BOPUS is, is a, a really big deal. Um, you know, you, you will hear this term a lot, um, you know, and, and you'll hear it everywhere because everyone talks about it now. Um, you know, so buy online, pick up, pick up, right? So BOPUS in store. Okay. Um, and, and it's, it's really, you know, BOPUS is, is a thing that, um, you know, brands and retailers will talk about as you're in the retail industry. Um, almost everybody will talk about this, BOPUS about that, BOPUS this, um, you know, so it's it's definitely one of those acronyms that you want to remember along the way. Um, some key things here, um, you know, Walmart shoppers, 80% uh, of Walmart customers use BOPUS. Um, this is a U.S. number. Uh, the Canadian number is is um, less than that. I think it's it's ranging around the 60. It's kind of hovering 60% ish, plus or minus. Um, so not quite the same adoption rate that the U.S. has. 52% um, of Best Buy customers use BOPUS, um, and that is the same here in Canada as well as the U.S. Um, Best Buy, I guess because electronics people really love it, and they're used to Amazon as well. Um, electronic people really, really like, you know, the buy online, pick up in store. Um, and then obviously we don't have Target in Canada, boo. Um, but, um, Target has a lot of BOPAs. Um, funny enough, so Target is get, kind of getting its butt kicked by Walmart on, um, BOPAs because they, they just don't, they don't have the same logistical acumen that a Walmart has. Um, Walmart kind of leads the way with a whole chunk of things in the marketplace in terms of, um, how they go to market. Um, if you're looking at Walmart, I would look up uh, Walmart Orange Tower um, and, and read up on the Orange Tower. Uh, Walmart basically has this enormous um, Orange Tower that, um, you know, you you know, if you bought it online and you're buying it in store, you would you would find the Orange Tower, you head there and then your you would key in your order number. And then this thing would basically deliver your packages from the back end of the warehouse to this orange tower and it would drop it inside this orange tower. It, um, when it first came out, everyone mocked, uh, mocked this process, but, um, it is kind of turned into something iconic. So it's, um, it's working out in stores. Um, so three reasons that retailers offer BOPUS, um, one is, um, better customer experience. Um, you know, consumers, customers can find what they want. Um, they can order at any time. Uh, you know, you, you extend the life of your store from, um, 
you know, eight to five, nine to nine, you know, kind of that 12 hour offering window into a 24 hour operation, which means um, if you think of the things that we talked about last night, um, you know, last week, the profit per square foot, all of that kind of stuff, this stuff actually matters, right? Because now you, you're in a place where you really, you really are, um, you've really got yourself, uh, you know, something that, that um, works for you all the time. Um, you know, real estate that's working for you all the time, warehouses that are working for you all the time. Um, you know, it allows customers to view and touch their product. Um, I think that the early numbers on this is that returns are down when you use Bopus, um, as opposed to like a, an Amazon where you, you ship direct to your house, um, because it allows you to be able to see the product when you pick it up. Um, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you know, they still get returns at store, but if you've seen it online and then you get to store and you get to see it one more time before you buy it, it seems to change the returns process. So you get a, a reduction in returns as well. Um, and then, and then you do get, you do get the ability to market, which is really interesting, right? Because, you know, when people come into your store and they buy stuff, you don't get the chance to remarket um you know very well because they don't leave you a number they don't leave you um you know a subscription whereas if they order online you have them so you can incent them by giving them a coupon you can have them you know give them a voucher you can do all sorts of things that allow you to um kind of remarket what would normally be a traditional brick and mortar customer um and so that's kind of a big deal as well because now you get the chance to be able to um you know connect with them more and build in a way that you couldn't at store level um which is kind of neat now the other things why retailers um offer bopus one is reduced shipping uh, you know the whole column of re reduced shipping costs um in store fulfillment um saves a ton of money on shipping costs so uh it means that i don't have to worry about i can still ship my product to store the way i would in a truck um you know this this cute little truck here which is way better than anything i could draw um versus a box to your house um which is not you know i keep ordering one thing at a time from amazon prime wondering when i can bankrupt amazon prime um and maybe i won't be able to do it by myself but at some point i gotta imagine that you know in canada at least amazon's gonna say enough is enough we're losing a ton of money on um you know, shipping individual boxes to your house, we're not doing it anymore, uh, even if you pay for Prime. So, um, you know, wonder about that one. The other one is uh, the second one here, um, retailers. Uh, retailers don't have to worry about um, shipments getting stolen um, or uh, re-delivery attempts because it's there. It's at store. You've got to go in and pick it up. You will get it. Um, and then the buy online and return in store really becomes something that you again save money on because you're not asking them to repackage it you're not talking about lost product you're not talking about any of those things the one thing that comes out of this is you know last week we talked about um you know back room or um you know kind of storage and so when you buy enough online in one neighborhood what happens to your backroom storage right so where you've saved some shipping costs you might you might increase your logistical cost of figuring out what the heck do i do with backroom now okay um one of the neat things about backroom too is if i have um if i have a uh, if i have three stores uh, store number one, store number two, store number three, and then store number one gets um, 10 things returned to them, and then store number two gets 30, and then store number three gets 20. Um, most stores don't have the ability to transfer. So if store number one needs something that store 30 has in their return inventory, there is no simple way for three to send that item to one. If you're a corporate store, maybe it doesn't matter as much because you're able to balance out the books, um, you know, or balance out financials. But if you were a franchise, um, think Canadian Tire or Shoppers Drug Mart, you can't do it. There's no way to do it. And so, 
you do this is worrisome from an operation standpoint so again if you're getting into operations um you should be worried about this right because this backroom thing could wind up being a really kind of um you know troublesome issue that you're going to have to worry about okay um the last thing so increased store traffic um what we've seen a lot of is is that um when you go and you you pick up in store there's there's kind of this increased market basket um that happens so they come into store and they actually will they actually will go and shop for more items so you're getting um an increased um an increased market basket or increased shopping basket uh, it's actually a shopping basket let's get rid of that um so increased um shopping basket okay um and then uh, and then the other thing is just you know so so again so what's kind of neat here is not only do you get the chance to remarket them, which you could never do with a traditional bricks and mortar customer, now you're driving a traditional bricks and mortar um, who you might have lost because they didn't want to shop your store anymore, except they went to Bopis and now they've got it and they're going to come back in and buy some more stuff while they're there. Um, and so there's kind of this really neat change in paradigm um, where some of you more analytical types is, how do you make this connection? So how do you quantify the difference between um, a brick and mortar customer um, and a BOPA's customer? So um, as you get into analytics, I would think about this stuff. I know there's a bunch of you that want to get into analytics. I would think about this is how do you do bricks and mortar and BOPA's? How do you um, how do you quantify these and then figure out the variable between these two so that you can show the organization where the value is? um and and then in that same sense as you know how, how do you show that someone who abandoned you know a brick and mortar who abandoned you um, to go somewhere else is now coming back because of bopus because it's definitely happening we just don't know how to measure it um so that would be the challenge as you as you jump into market is to think about that um the other thing is that you have the ability to personalize now um I will tell you about Walmart. So Walmart knows roughly what my order is. You know, um, we probably order, we order about $65 in groceries from Walmart every four days or so. Um, most of you live by yourself. You're probably having a heart attack. Um, I, you know, with the three, I literally meant that they're eating out of me out of house and home. Um, that is just my Walmart order. Um, I am, you know, this, this consumer here, I am probably this consumer because these are all my responses. And then if I were just breaking this out by groceries, I would say I do Walmart shopping, I do Costco shopping, um, and then I do Longos and I do, um, an ethnic store. Uh, I say ethnic because we, I live in Mississauga. There's, there's easily three different Asian, um, stores. That I would go to. So there's TNT, which is now owned by Loblaws. There's um, a local guy near me called Grants. I don't know any Asian guys named Grant, but there's a Grants around me. And then there's another one, um, uh, Highway 10 in Dundas, and I can't remember the name. Um, anyway, there's three. But so I would say that in any given week, I probably spend 65 bucks at at Walmart, I would spend um, probably another 50 at Costco, um, you know, for so Walmart, I would buy your routine items, uh, milk, eggs, um, uh, milk, eggs, pasta, um, cereal. Uh, what else would I buy there? Um, yogurt, I would buy there. Um, and then I, you know, all sorts of other things, um, you know, breakfast sausages, all that kind of stuff. At Costco, I want to be buying bigger cuts of meat. Um, sorry, I'm giving you like a grocery lesson, but but there's a point here. Um, you know, um, coffee I buy at Costco because that's very consistent. Um, and then uh, and then I I do kind of shop around for other stuff. Um, and then Longos is all fruit. 
um, all that kind of stuff. And that's super expensive. It's probably another 50 bucks there a week at least. Um, you know, and then the ethnic store is everything else that I can't find. So any veggies, um, things like bok choy, um, yeah, um, Napa, bok choy, all the kind of string beans and things like that, 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 um, it's hard to find in, in, um, some of these stores I would buy here, um, at this store. So easily I spend, um, you know, 200, 200 bucks a week on groceries, if not more. Um, and that's really without kind of even getting into the nitty gritty details. So the point is now, you know, um, the next quiz will be on, um, Phil's grocery, uh, Phil's grocery list. Uh, I'm just joking. Um, but, uh, but what it allows you to do is so, um, if you look at just this list alone, right? Uh, Walmart is the only one that I do BOPAs with. So Walmart now has this grocery list that, um, that I buy from them and Walmart can now market me and say, Hey, listen, Thanks for doing business with me. I'd really like you to buy more for me. So every now and then I'm going to throw you a $25 gift card. So now it makes me come back more. Um, I also know what your regular orders are. So I can send you an email saying, hey, I didn't see an order for this week. Um, do you want me to go ahead and place your regular $65 order? Um, or it could say, hey, listen, I, I saw that you bought milk eggs, um, bread, cereal, um, but, but you know what? You missed um, some of those um, really great Oreo cookies that um, we saw you order a bunch of weeks ago. Do you want me to throw a coupon on there um, and, and get you something you know cheaper into Oreos again? Uh, you know, so Walmart now has this ability to market me and kind of go after the $65 range and do a whole bunch of things. It can get you, it can get me to come back more. It can get me to buy more. Um, it can get me to come back more and buy more. Okay. Um, and so where I'm going with this is a really illustrative differences. You know, you've got, you've got Costco, which doesn't have this. Costco has something similar in that they have my membership, but they don't, I've got a funky ink there. I don't know why it's doing different colors. Um, they have a membership, but they don't do marketing. And so, you know, Costco is pretty static. Like if you want to come in and spend 50 bucks, great. If you want to spend 300, I'll have stuff for you. But they don't really, um, there's as a passive marketing and a merchandising marketing. So Costco um, is very good at figuring out what I might like to buy. Um, you know, is it another pair of dad jeans in there? Is it a cheap pair of Reeboks? Um, you know, and they kind of know the things that their, their, their members want. And so they do marketing, passive marketing based on that and on merchandising, but they don't come after me for more stuff. Um, you know, which is different. Um, I'm going to get off this funky color because it's confusing me a little bit. Um, and I won't lie. I'm, I'm very tired. So, um, so I, it's going to distract me even more. Um, long goes also has a, a rewards program. That's how they're going to track me. Um, but they don't do that either. They just accumulate points and then I can spend it back there again. Um, but Longos can't track me at all as a bricks and mortar customer. They do it experientially, right? Um, so they don't track it corporately. They look at it from a recognition level. Um, so all they do is they say, Hey, listen, you know, um, when you come in, you, you're going to build and you're going to build a relationship with the cashier and, and the people who work there, which is absolutely true. Um, today I went in, um, I got, I, I was making a Chinese dish and I, I was missing two things. I was missing frozen peas and um, two potatoes. So I went in and bought two potatoes and frozen peas, which should have taken me about two minutes to do, but I got into a conversation with a guy who works at Longo's who recognized me um, and I was paying with my phone. So he wanted to know about my phone um, and did I like tapping for payment. And so it took me like 15 minutes to get out of there. But that's the Longo's difference, right? Is um, they build an experiential, but they can't tap this bricks and mortar any other way than to build a relationship, right? So if I love the place, um, Maybe I'll stay more often. He's creepy because one eye is too. There we go. 
Um, you know, I love the play, so I'll come back more. Um, and then, you know, with the ethnic guys, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care about you at all. Their pitches, look, we're ethnic, we're specialty. You're going to come here because you need it. You can't find stuff anywhere else. Too bad for you. And they're right. Um, so all of that being said is, Bopus has some really neat benefits. And, and most of what I described here is probably where you guys are going to play, is this kind of um, building out from a routine and figuring out how you go about um, remarketing um, people, tapping into their behaviors, and then helping them, you know, enriching their experience by driving a better routine out of what they do. Um, okay, so that's kind of that's kind of Bopus. This one uh, we've talked about this a lot. Um, I really don't want to beat it to death. Um, I think you guys get it. Um, but but that's kind of Bopus. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I will see you. The next check-in will be the beginning of April. Um, yeah, beginning of April. Um, and we may need to, I will send out an email um, later this week as I just need to confirm. I may be, um, I may be heading to New York the first week of April for some work stuff. So we may need to do these via phone um, or by Zoom so I can kind of see some stuff from you, but um, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll email you guys and, and um, we can talk, we can talk through the groups um, separately. Okay. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful week um, and I will, uh, I will talk to you soon. I'll upload this Wednesday night so you guys will see it uh, um, Thursday morning as usual. Okay. Thanks. Bye.